What's up, everybody? This is Distinguished Ruffy and Mitch. We got another episode of DRTV. Today, we're lucky enough to have Nelson here with us to talk a little bit about the company. How you guys doing? Nelson Ruiz with Moya Ruiz Cigars. Tell me a little bit about when you started and why you started. Uh, I started about five years ago. Um, I went into the IPCPR with Eric uh, Espinosa and he was just separating from the old brands and kind of getting his old brand going. And I really saw the community. I saw how many true friends and how many people came around to support him and support that group. And uh, I got a, uh, one of my best friends is Danny Moya, which lives in Jersey. Um, hopefully you didn't record, I said he was my best friend. Uh, he, uh, we could edit that one. So he, uh, he was really wanting to start the brand and he was telling me, you know, let's do it now, let's do it at the beginning, let's kind of grow with Eric and grow with the Lazona team. And uh, we got together and at, at first it was difficult, like any starting a new business is. But uh, we got into it, it was a passion. Both of our grandfathers and, and family in Cuba used to be involved in the cigar business. Our parents came here to avoid communism and they had to work regular jobs and, and kind of lost that cigar passion if you know because of the economy and survival and uh, we had the ability to kind of bring it back and uh, it's been great we've been doing it now about five years um, so I, what would you say was like the driving force to actually start it I mean you mentioned your grandfather and if if you read you know the about us section on your website you, you bring up your grandfather as well um, I would We're, say that was like a, a main I, I think it? really I think really for us it's it's we're the passion of, of the whole concept like I like I like the I like I'm very into the, the marketing the creativity the 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 networking part of the business uh, Danny's very passionate with the actual blending and the actual different types of tobacco and the different aspects of the cigar business sure. and and combined um, you know I think we've done fairly well over the last five years. We've, we've expanded in a business that, that is very tricky to get into. And uh, it's just both of us have a passion and then we kind of work very well together. Well, you definitely have created a, a good catalog of cigars. Like, I, I personally enjoy pretty much, every, actually, I can't say pretty much, I enjoy everything you guys fucking can help. It's Thanks, all man. of it's great. Um, I mean, I have a whole shelf in the humidor dedicated. I to see humidor. that, man, I see that. Um, from the cigars that you have, what what is your most popular cigar? Our most popular cigar is the La Jugada Habana. Um, that's the one that's gotten the highest ratings. Uh, it scored a 92 in Cigar Stop Magazine. It won Cigar of the Year 2012. So, so that cigar uh, by far was kind of the first cigar that really put us on the map. Um, and uh, it's at a very good price point. It's in the seven eight dollar range. It's got a, a lot of flavor, a lot of pepper. Um, so it's a cigar that not only is, is priced correctly, has a good you know, a, a good flavor and a, and a good value, um, but then it got the exposure to, to make it the most popular. Nice. So that definitely is our best selling cigar currently. Now, what's your favorite out of uh, Oh man, that's going to be hard. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of Parley Prieto, our first cigar. Um, I'm a big uh, Maduro guy. I love the rake as well. I'm smoking the rake right now, but um, just a little bit of loyalty. It was the first cigar we ever did. Um, and, uh, you know, to this day, that cigar, when you age it, uh, really, really comes together incredibly. So uh, that cigar is probably my personal favorite. Uh, I'd have to agree with you. I think that was the first cigar I smoked from you guys. And the rake is definitely one of my favorites. Um, Dimac, I think. That, that's up there as well. Yeah, yeah it's, 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 it's a great smoke. Well, what we do, and, and I'll give you guys a little bit of insight on how we do it. What we do is we try to release uh, one core line a year, more or less, and expand our, our normal portfolio of cigars. And then we try to do one or two limited runs. And in the limited runs is where we could really get the, the creativity and do things a little bit different. A little bit that, that let's say maybe a bigger company or let's say a company that uh, 
has a different following, probably wouldn't be able to do. So we, we've done the nunchuck, we've done the Chinese finger trap, we've done the dimak, uh, we did the pickle juice cigar as well, um, and then recently we did civil disobedience. So all of those smaller batches um, have really been a lot different. You know, something different with the packaging, something different with how we present the cigar. So we've had a lot of fun with it. Um, so out, out of two things that you mentioned, that there's actually a couple of things I want to bring up. One is there seems to be a heavy Asian influence okay. in, in your cigars, at least in the, the marketing aspect. Is there a particular reason for that? Uh, a big reason for that. So what we did when, when we won in 2012 Cigar of the Year on the dojo, um, just like you guys, the Ruffians, it's, it's a group of, of cigar smokers. And, and that group really took us in. And they really kind of helped us because they were going to their local brick and mortars asking for a product and we started getting random calls from different parts of the country to bring in our product. So Danny and I were talking about it and, and we're like, you know what, when we do a limited edition cigar, let's make it you know have a purpose sure. so for us it was let's dedicate it to the dojo community um, so every year sense. what we do is we do about 500 to a thousand sticks I mean 500 to a thousand boxes we typically sell about 10% of it to the community first okay. so any of the original members if they want to get a box they can always get yeah. their hands on first, it first and then we take it and we take it to the show and to different places and we sell it nationwide but because it's a whole theme, Cigar Dojo, Martial Arts, we've gone with the Nunchuck, the Chinese Finger Trap, the Dim Mai, more of an Asian theme with the packaging as well. Uh, the next would be probably one of the, the hottest buttons we have right now. You, you did the Civil Disobedience. Correct. Obviously, the, the FDA regulation has really kind of pissed everybody off. Correct. So, as a cigar manufacturer, what's your stance on how a cigar smoker can utilize their rights as a civilian to make their voice known about what they want? The biggest thing is the CRA. So, the CRA becoming a member, getting involved, and supporting the CRA because as as a group, when we all come together and we're connected, it's gonna make it the best voice or the strongest voice. Uh, what we did with civil disobedience is we put it at a very, very aggressive price point. Uh, as a company, we don't make any money off that cigar. Um, and then what we do is the proceeds of the civil disobedience line completely, we donate to the CRA. So uh, we did go to Washington. Uh, we had a, a big poster in Washington when they had the CRA. All the members signed it right in front of the Capitol. Um, so we have done as much as we can as a, as a boutique manufacturer to try to get the social media part of it done. To try to get be good, my man. To try to get everyone aware and to try to help the cause as much as we can. It's good. People, I think people have lost focus on what they can do to actually fight. I think everybody just feels like they've been beaten. Be good. Alrighty. So, so it's good that there's a manufacturer out there that's wanting to stand up and, and fight against it. So, tell us a little bit about how the civil disobedience came about. So, uh, basically, uh, Danny had the idea, and uh, what he did was, basically, the, the photo is uh, basically represents the, the, the first person that wrote a paper on what it meant to be civilly disobedient. Um, and, and what we did was, we, we took that and we ran with the idea, because we wanted to kind of follow the rules, if that makes sense, where, where, where we're, not, we're not doing anything Thing that's against the FDA or against you know government obviously but at the same time we got to stand up and fight for our cause right. and and the cigar smokers and our and our group um, one thing that I wanted to tell you guys also the uh, the big thing with us and we're kind of worst case scenario for the CRA because um, all of our cigars came out after 2008 so you're all Subject All of our brands came out after 2008. So every single Vitola you have. Correct. So, so we put in a lot of work. We put in a lot of time. We've grown our business, and 
it would be a, a catastrophic situation if, as it was written, um, it's actually executed and and it becomes worst case scenario. And I and I think that's not only for for Moya Rua cigars, but a lot of the smaller companies, a lot, even the bigger companies, what sells for them is the cigars they made post 2008. You know, very few brands that were around. 9, 10, 12 years ago, right now are a hot seller. Yeah, of course not. So, so it's a it's a big deal. It's a big deal for all of us. I mean, the the cigar is great, and the idea of, of fighting the FDA uh, at, at that level, civilly, I think, yes, exactly, uh, speaks volumes. And I'd love to see multiple people get behind it. Um, so one of the best ways to do it is obviously, you know, contacting the Cigar Rights of America, Correct. up with them, helping the fight. Correct. Uh, any other outlets that you know of? Uh, we're, we're, there's actually a, a, a luncheon that they're having with the senator. Okay. Uh, Eric is attending it, Espinosa La Zona, as kind of the parent company. Mm -hmm. And they're actually meeting with the local government leaders in Florida. Okay. Uh, to, to rally because Florida is going to be affected drastically because a lot of the manufacturers, based on the tobacco coming from Central America and, and Dominican Republic, a lot of them are based out of Florida. So it would really affect you know a lot of employees, a lot of families, a lot of economy because there's a lot of uh, businesses that are you know tobacco right yeah and in, in South Florida, Florida based. Um, all right, so to to kind of branch off into a lighter topic. Okay. Out, out of the um, all the cigars that you could smoke, correct. It's one of those things that everybody has. If there's one cigar you could smoke for, like, say you got stranded on the island, you could only smoke one cigar for five years. For how long? For five years, one brand, one cigar. Do you have one? Uh, no. Uh, of, of 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 my own. It could be anything you want. Um, of, of follow the follow-up question is which is your favorite out of your own catalog? But like if somebody stranded you somewhere and said, "Hey, pick pick one brand of cigar." Um, not not my cigar. Um, I'm gonna have to go with with Eric's, and not because he makes it, but it's an amazing smoke. The, the Larange, the cigar that he released, I think was honestly robbed in the rankings this year. Um, I think that easily could have been one of the top five cigars of the year. Um, and that cigar, uh, really, really, I could, I could smoke almost daily. Um, of my personal cigars, um, like I said, I'm, I'm very leaning towards Prieto because I like that cigar a lot. Um, but uh, the Chinese finger trap for me personally um, is another kicker because it's, it's very flavorful. It's got a lot of power. It's kind of uh, the packaging looks, you know, not like a strong cigar, not like a cigar that's going to bring it, and it does. So, so that cigar, we had a lot of fun putting that together, and it, it created a lot of buzz on, on social media, and uh, it sold out in like four days. So that cigar really did well for us. Uh, that's awesome. Well, look, I, I appreciate you putting some time aside to talk to us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to get to meet you. Well, or thank you, man. Get to meet you. It's always a pleasure to get to talk to you. Uh, really enjoy it, man. I look forward to future endeavors and, and other events that we can do together as well. Thank you, man. And I want to say one thing. You guys put on a hell of a party today. This ruffian crawfish boil was real. The, the, the club is family. And, and you guys uh, from day one have really put together a, a serious group. Uh, I do not want to play guns with you guys because you guys have more guns than we do. But uh, you guys really do it the right way, man. So thank you for what you do. Hey, th thank you for the support. All right, man. Well, we are out from SM Smoke Shop. Thank you guys for having me. And uh, Distinguished Ruffians out. Yeah. All right, it's Distinguished Ruffian Mitch coming from s and Smoke Shop in Fort Pierce, Florida. Thanks for watching another great episode. Until next time, keep some green on your screen.